uh, in section 3.2 we talked about summaries for uh, symmetrical distribution and remember that was the mean for the measure of center and standard deviation for the measure of variability or horizontal spread. Well now we're going to move in what do we do for skewed distributions and we're going to talk about the median for the middle point and we're going to talk about IQR for the measure of variability and we'll talk more about what those mean and how we find those values. Here we go with a very skewed distribution. So it's the income of New Yorkers in thousands of dollars per year and you can see that we have a lot of people with low incomes and a few people with very large incomes. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the middle number. But the thing that is important with that middle number is we have to have the data that has already been sorted. So you can find the median with technology. We looked at that last time. But you can also find the median of a small uh, sample by hand. And so then you've got to put your data in order from smallest to largest. So again, about half the residents have incomes greater than 25,200 and about half have incomes below 25,200. That's what the median is. It's the number where half the data is larger and half the data is smaller. What would be typical? All right, the mean or the median? Well, the mean is $42,000, but the median is $25,000. The mean in this case overestimates a typical value because the mean is pulled toward the tail. So what we say about the mean is the mean is not a resistant measure. It is influenced by extreme values where the median is resistant because it's less affected by extreme values. So the median is the middle number. All the numbers are arranged in order and um, if there's two numbers in the middle, then we average them. We will have some examples of that. Here's our first example. We do our gas example, and these are not in order. So the first thing we have to do is put them in order. Now we found the median uh, with our calculator and with StatCrunch in section 3.2. So just to remind you, what we did was we went to Stat, Edit, and there are our gas prices. And then we did Stat, Calc, One Variable Statistics. It's 1A, we don't have a frequency list, so we're going to calculate. And here they are. There is our mean that we found. There's our standard deviation. This little arrow means there's more numbers. So if we go down below, we get our minimum and our maximum, our median, quartile one, and quartile three. You can see it all right there. But let's talk about how we do it without technology for a second. So we're gonna put them all in order. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we know there's not one number in the middle when we have even. So we take the two middle numbers, which is the 299, add them together and divide by 2. So the median price of gas in Austin, Texas on that day in 2013 is 299, meaning Half the gas was more expensive and half the gas was less expensive. So when we talk about the median, we can talk about a formula for the location of the median and that's what this means. 
Capital M is what we use for median. L stands for location, location of median. So we add how many there are, add one and divide by two, okay? 10 plus one is 11 divided by two, which is gonna be five and a half. So we know the median is halfway in between fifth from the bottom and fifth from the top. So if we have 25 values in our data set, 25 plus one is 26 divided by two is 13. So the 13th value from the top or the bottom will be our median. For example, here is a data set and notice they're not in order. So step one, put them in order. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus one is seven, divided by two is three and a half. So our median is gonna be halfway between the third and fourth values. So we add them up and divide by two. So the median is 0.915. So that means the median, just like the mean, doesn't have to be one of our data points. We have one more data point. Put them in order. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this should actually be pointing to seven plus one is eight divided by two is four. So the median is 0 0.73. It is the data value in the middle. So this is how you use your calculator. You put it in a list, you do the one variable statistics, and then when you get your results, go down to where it says median. Let's talk about measuring the spread. I have an example to do later. The standard deviation is the measure, we measure the spread using the distance from the mean, but it doesn't work in a skewed distribution. So we're gonna use the interquartile range, and that's what IQR is. First thing, the range. The range is simply the difference between the largest and the smallest values. Put them in order. In this case, the group of eight children with heights, 48 is our smallest, 71 is our biggest, so we look at the difference, and the difference is 23 inches. When we do quartiles, what we do is we divide the data into four equal parts. So in other words, the median, the median divides it in two. Then we have quartile one divides the bottom half into two parts and quartile three divides the top half into two parts. The interquartile range is the difference in the values from quartile one to quartile three. So in other words, we look at the interquartile range is the spread of the middle half of our data what they did with this dot plot is apparently they counted. So 25% uh, of our individuals in our sample are in the lowest quartile, 25% in the second quartile, 25% uh, in the third quartile, 25% in the fourth quartile. So we find the value of our third quartile and our first quartile and subtract them so it comes out to be 39 pounds. So again, how do we do this? We do it just like we did before. We put our data in a list. We do the one variable statistics and you can find quartile one and quartile three and then you find their difference. You would do that, the calculator doesn't do that for you. Now in StatCrunch, you could put in interquartile range as one of the things you wanted StatCrunch to tell you. Here is an example. 
So here's our group of eight children and we want to find the interquartile range. So we're going to put them into our calculator. We did one variable statistics and here it gives us quartile one and quartile three. So we're going to subtract those and we get that our interquartile range is 10.5. Now what I want to show you is how we would do it with the raw data by hand. Okay, So this is that weight data. This is that weight data that um, <clears throat> was in an introductory statistics class on the first day. And we have, let's see, two, four, six, eight, ten in a row. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. We have 53 individuals. So add 1 is 54, divided by 2 is 27. So the median is going to be the 27th number from the bottom or from the top. Well that's this first 165. Now, <clears throat> when you're going to do this by hand, leave the median out. Now to find quartile 1 we're going to find the median of the lower half and quartile 3 is the median of the upper half. So that means we have 26 plus 1 divided by 2 is 13.5. So between the 13th and the 14th individual 11, 12, 13, 14. So between 127 and 128 is going to be our first quartile. And between 185 and 185. Well, it's pretty easy to see that the third quartile is going to be 185. The first quartile is going to be 127 and a half because we add them up and divide by 2. So quartile 1 is 127 and a half. Quartile 2 is the median, and quartile 3 is 185. We can look at that on a stem and leaf plot, which is very much like our dot plot, in that we had 63 individuals, and our middle one was the... I lost it just a second. Our middle one was the 27th uh, data point. So we would just count 27. And that's going to be in here, right here. And then we're going to find between the 13th and the 14th um, here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13, 14. So quartile 1 is halfway between those two. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So our quartile 3 is right there. Okay? So we, you can do it by counting or you can do it by technology. And that is dealing with uh, typical and spread for a skewed distribution.